Hello and welcome to a quick video here. Actually, I always say that in the beginning, so it'll be quick. It never is. That's what she said. Anyways, um, the video here, first of all, I want to I want to apologize to everyone out there that I haven't been doing that many videos lately. Um, with this new HD camera and all this HD stuff, gotta get new software, uh, new stuff in a computer in order to edit it. It's been, you know, kind of a learning curve, transitional period, so I'm sorry about that. Also, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put some time into my, my, uh, the new feature length film that I'll be filming, uh, over the summer. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to, to throw that out there, my apologies. Also, I want to congratulate New York! New York for being the Super Bowl champions! Woo! -hoo! Yeah! We did it! So excited! I got my Mark Sanchez figure out. It was all hyped up! New York! We did it! What? No, actually, no. Actually, I, I didn't watch the game because I had to work. What? Yes, I'm, I'm just, I just, yes, I know New York won. We're just, we're talking about this. Whoa. I'm making a video. Anyways, congratulations to New York for being the Super Bowl champions. It's friggin' awesome. It was, it's beautiful. It's better than you get to watch the game, but I lo what? What do you mean where I get my information from? No, Sports Center, the news, everybody, you know? Didn't you hear it was like all over everywhere? New York wins Super Bowl, you know, giant comeback. Wasn't the Jets? Ah. Well, apparently, New York did win the Super Bowl, but it was the Giants. My apologies. All right. Let's put this behind us. Who did they beat? The Patriots? Oh, fuck yeah. That's all right. I'm okay with that. Tom Brady going down. All right, now. This video here. I'm going to do a quick video here. It's not going to be quick. It's going to be long, actually. It's just the way it rolls. I always say that. It never happens. I tend to ramble. Sorry. It's the way it is. Uh, <laughs> And that's been Kevin Uncensored. The video in question is, I was going to do an Ask Kevin Anything, and then I always get questions all the time. People are asking me, what do you think of the new Spider-Man trailer, second one that came out? What do you think about the Dark Knight Rises trailer? And what do you think of the new Avengers trailer? So I thought, you know what, instead of doing an Ask Kevin Anything, where I'm going to ramble about other stuff, and then ramble about these three things as well, and then it's going to last like 15 hours, and people are going to start getting white hairs in their beards and shit, and then the women will be crying because the men aren't coming out of the computer room. It's like, ah, I gotta watch Decompose! It's, it's just not good. It's not good for me. So, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically, basically take those three comic book movies and I'm going to give to you what I think about the trailers and what I think should be placed as one, two, three, or the way I think it's going to work out uh, when everything's said and done. So, as always, as always, as an HD, as an SD, sit down, stick around, and enjoy. All right. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Number three, number two, and number one. So I'm going to go with this. My opinion. Now, the number three, I'm just basically going in the order of the preference that I want to see them. Like that, if I had this, like, if I said, you know what, okay, Kevin, this would... You have to watch this one. You basically get a choice. You get to watch one every week. Which one do you want to see first? Which one are you most excited about? So just so I'm going to count them down. So at number three would be Avengers. Now, not discrediting, I, I, I love Avengers. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's just, it's kind of hard to pick when you get these three. Only these three to pick from. If Ghost Rider wasn't there, they'd be number four. Now, this is the thing. Avengers. The pros with Avengers, and the pros with the trailer and everything, is 
Just a shitload of superheroes in there. Beautiful. Love it. And I love... I, I love the first trailer. I love the fact you hear Loki in the beginning talking about, you know, how, how humanity is born to be ruled. It's beautiful. Beautiful. We're meant to be ruled. Awesome. I love that. I like that. Avengers as a whole is good. The property is good. We know it's going to be a Marvel movie. It's going to be good. All these individual characters are all proven. Well, they're not franchises yet. Because Thor isn't a franchise yet. But they're all proven movies. Individually, they're awesome. They were all good. Well, except maybe the first Hulk. I don't like the Angley Hulk. I never did. I don't know why. Something about big fucking poodles and shit. It just, it just, it rubbed me, the, it rubbed me the wrong way. I don't like that movie. Incredible Hulk was good, though. Either way, we have a totally new Hulk again third, for the third time. Um, so, all these movies stood alone fairly well. So I was like, you know, cool. We get all these together. The pros are naturally the cast. The cast is great. You can't say really anything negative about the cast. They're all great in their own in their own ways. They're awesome. They provide all you know different levels and different contrasts between each other. It's good. I like that. I like the idea that they didn't introduce all the characters in one movie, and then you kind of got a big clusterfuck. I'm happy about that. I'm happy the way that they did it. They you know gave them all their individual movies, well, except for Hawkeye. And, you know, and that's what we have now, which is really cool. Now, that's kind of a double-edged sword because even though they all had their own movies, I still think it might be a little too much hero for the screen. What I mean by that is it's going to be great. It's going to be action-filled. It's going to blow your fucking mind. It's going to be beautiful. But it's not going to be that movie when later on you're going to be like, Oh, wow, you know what, like that, you know, that movie blew my mind, you know, it blew it, but, you know, it, it didn't make love to it. It didn't make love to my mind, in a sense that it's not going to be known later on for anything, you know, for, you know, oh, well, it was great acting, or the story was really good. It's not going to pull, you know, it's not going to pull any uh, Oscar nominations either. It's not going to do what uh, The Dark Knight did. It's not going to do what Heath Ledger did. It's not going to do any of that stuff. It's basically, it's going to be a, a it's going to be the same, basically the same type of movie as they all were individually. Just a huge fucking action movie. But some of, you know, Iron Man and Thor did have good, you know, did have a good story. So, uh, even Captain America. Hulk, again, Ang Lee is fucking nuts. Um, but, all that being said, that's why I put Avengers at the third spot because I think that even though the, the trailer looks great they look the costumes look good everything looks great I still think that the fact there's so much personality on the screen that it's going to kind of lead to less development although we had the development before I still think that even within this story development's going to be poor that's just my opinion I might be wrong I'm like I said it's just just going on a trailer and just on general notion of a, of a Hollywood works, period. Now, so, this leads us with our two other movies. Because when I tell you what's number two, you're going to know what's number one. So, the number two spot is Batman, The Dark Knight Rises. So, which is probably going to lead a whole, lot, whole bunch of people out there scratching their heads and saying... So Spider-Man's first? We'll get to that. Batman The Dark Knight Rises. Now, while I think this will probably be the most... I don't know, the most, if you were to say, Oscar-worthy one of the gang, more than likely. I mean, Christopher Nolan has a good track record now. We kind of know what to expect. And um, we expect great things. And I think it's going to deliver great things. Now, I put this ahead of Avengers because I think it's going to be better developed. I like Christopher Nolan. I know what I'm getting into. And I love Bane. And the fact that Bane is in here and he's not playing, you know, a fucking gimp with a wrestling mask on. Fucking Luke, <laughs> luchador gimp is awesome. I'm very happy with that. So if they can keep Bane half as cool as he was in Nightfall 
And for those of you who don't know about Nightfall, there's a Nightfall 101 video from yours truly on YouTube. Search for it. If they can keep him half as cool as that, it's going to be it's gonna be a great movie. So, and, and Anne Hathaway. Oh my gosh, it looks so hot. So hot. So, I think for those reasons, and the trailer looks awesome, that whole fucking football scene is just nuts. I love that. It just, it looks good. It looks like Batman finally met his match. At least physically. The Joker was always inferior to Batman. S you know, smart and crazy at the same time. But physically though, you know, he didn't have the... Couldn't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Batman. Not like Bane does. So, it's going to be interesting to see that, you know, Batman's... One of Batman's greatest assets is, you know, his physical strength. And it's going to be put to the test with Bane. And Bane being super intelligent, that's going to put Batman's intelligence to the test. So... I'm very excited to see that. The trailer's very, very good. I love it. And I think that to incorporate Nightfall and incorporate Arkham and all that in there, it's going to be good. It's going to be really good. So that's my number two. So which leads us to number one, Spider-Man. The amazing Spider-Man. Finally, finally they do that. When Spider-Man was first released by Columbia Pictures, my biggest pet peeve, well, my biggest, I mean, his biggest pet peeve when it first was announced, was that they were calling it Spider-Man. No, no, it's better to call it Spider-Man than to call it Alpha Flight. You know, don't get me wrong. But the thing that, that peeved me is like, holy shit, why don't they, why didn't they name that Amazing Spider-Man and come up with a sequel like Web of Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man, I, I always wanted to see that. I always did. That's it's my guilty, my little guilty pleasures. Even when they were saying, you know, James Cameron would direct it way back in the 90s, I always said, fuck, I hope it's called Amazing Spider-Man. So I finally get that wish. I finally get Amazing Spider-Man. Now, if they continue with Spectacular and Web of, ah, thank you, thank you, thank you, Columbia Pictures. It'll be cool. So I'm very excited about, just, just that excites me. Now, the first trailer kind of doesn't tell you much. They kind of make it look like it's totally dark. Like they're going like, you know, on a fucking on a Batman. Trying to pull a Warner Brothers on you. But, um, which is okay. Because people think Spider-Man's all fucking, all coloring glossy. It's not. There's a lot of dark shit that goes on in that comic book. And Peter had to deal with a lot of fucking stress. And a lot of bullshit in his life. So... You can't say, you know, Spider-Man's supposed to be campy. You know, Batman's supposed to be dark. No, they're, fuck, they're both dark. You know, just because Peter doesn't live in a cave. He lives in an apartment that looks like a cave. Doesn't mean he can't be dark. Now, the first trailer, like I said, nah, whatever. It was okay. What I liked about the first trailer, though, is what was that basically we were being told that we were going to see and hear about Peter's parents in the movie, which was never brought up before, and that is cool. That basically, the whole notion of Peter's parents was totally forgotten in the old Spider-Man trilogy. It's like, oh, holy fuck, this guy was immaculate. He just came out of his great aunt's 80-year-old sniz. It's pretty much, it's, it's the impression they left us with. So I'm happy that they're mentioning them. I don't know to what capacity. It doesn't really matter. The, the point is, they're acknowledging them, and I'm happy. Now, uh, you guys all know I'm a huge Spider-Man mark. I'm a huge fan of Spider-Man. So, seeing it at number one shouldn't be a huge surprise for you guys. What I saw in the new trailer was, I didn't just see, like, just darkness thing. Not only the parents, I got to see some of the cast actually acting. Now, I actually think... Hey, Dennis Leary's going to do a good job. I have no doubt. Um, I'm a little iffy on Emma Stone. She's nice to look at. But by the trailer and that, I was like, eh, is this Gwen? Like, I don't know. I just, I wasn't buying it was Gwen yet. I might buy, you know, I might buy some of it. I might put a bid on it. You know, but I don't know. If your credibility has a reserve, I don't think I'll meet it. But for now... We'll just say that it might be a little uncredible. Andrew Garfield looks 
looks great as Spider-Man. I mean, I can't complain about that. Um, I definitely wasn't as hesitant with him as I was hesitant with Tobey Maguire, which actually ended up playing a pretty good Spider-Man. So, I'm okay with that. The trailer was good. Actually, the trailer was really interesting because the, finally the lizard gets his appearance, uh, which is fucking long overdue. We finally get the lizard in the movie. And you actually see a lot of the lizard in the trailer, which I find really surprising because I thought they'd like... They kind of hold that back. That's kind of like the wow factor. It's kind of like, you know, well, you know, it's kind of like showing the Hulk, you know, in full, you know, in the trailers and all that. They did, but I mean, I, I don't know. It's it's kind of like in Jaws, you know, the big moment when you see actually the shark come out for the first time. After that, well, fuck it. You can see a shark come out all you want. They didn't hide the shark in Jaws 2. They didn't hide the shark. Well, in fact, they hide the shark in Jaws 3 because fucking sea roll was stupid. But... Point being, I kind of find it weird that they, they showed so much. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, I looked at it and I'm like, oh, cool, lizard, awesome. Kind of looks a little killer crockish. But um, I guess they're in the same family. They kind of would look alike. So I was, I was actually impressed by that. Um, it looks like there's going to be some, some pretty good action in there. There's still those little puns that Spider-Man gives, those little, you know, those little, those little quick remarks and the little humor in there. So I think it's actually going to be good. I was pretty upset when uh, they decided to, to reboot because we knew that, or we heard that John Malkovich was supposed to be the man to play the Vulture in the next one. Now, as I'm not a big fan of the Vulture, but I'm a fucking huge fan of John Malkovich. And if I could have seen him... In the Spider-Man movie, it would have been beautiful. So I was kind of upset about that. The reboot, you know, these things happen now with, you know, with Batman and all that. And they're already talking about re-rebooting Superman. Actually, they are. And they're, they're fucking re-rebooting everything, actually. It's kind of weird. It's like they can't come up with any new ideas. But um, I'll be interested a lot more in this, in this Spider-Man uh this whole Spider-Man thing, when I see villains like the Green Goblin and Venom, which in my opinion were not done justice. As much as I love William Dafoe, I hated that fucking suit he wore. I didn't like it. There's no fucking purple on that suit, and the mask and all that, and just the fucking... Okay, could you make it different? I don't... I don't know. I'm not a prop man. But I fucking... I just didn't like it. It looked way too cyber. I didn't like it. At all. So, if that gets a chance to change because of this, because of this new Spider-Man movie, and I get a chance to see a real Venom, Sam Raimi put the guy in because he had to. I understand that. I'm not going to bash completely what Venom was. In Spider-Man 3. Was he the Venom we know from comics? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But. Raimi had to do what he was told. And he did what he was told. And that's that. I've accepted that. I just want to see an Eddie fucking Brock. Like he was. In the 80's. And in fucking the early 90's. That's what I want to see. I want to see that. I don't want fucking costume with these little fucking lines going across and fucking face that looks half like carnage. I don't want to see that. I want to see the same Venom that I grew up reading. That's what I want to see. So if I get a chance to see that and I get a chance to see Green Goblin in a fucking suit that doesn't look like it was designed for fucking Event Horizon, I'll be fine. So enough of <laughs> This is turning to rent. So let's push that stuff aside. So Spider-Man... With the trailer, with the lizard, with everything that I'm seeing, the trailer had a good vibe. I was happy. It looked like I had the action, the comedy, the the the, the wow factor. Being a Spider-Man fan, it kind of reminds me that it's going to kind of be like what Sam Raimi had. Only problem with the Spider-Man movie, and a one and only huge problem with the movie. And it might not be a problem when we're all done, but right now it is. Is that the director is not proven. That's that's my problem. I have a director that's never done something like this before. 
That scares me. Then again, Sam Raimi had never done anything like that before. And it was great. So until next time, guys, take care. Later.